What's up everybody? In today's video, we are going to be modifying our Flipper Zero firmware in order to talk with our remote dog shot caller. We're going to be using our software-defined radio as we have in past videos to analyze the signal that is sent to our dog shot caller and understand what kind of a firmware modification we need to make to our Flipper Zero in order to properly perform a replay attack on that system. My name is Matt Brown. I am an IoT hacker, pen tester, and security researcher. And if you, like many, are going to DEF CON coming up here in a couple weeks, I would invite you to come and hang out with me at the Embedded Systems Village. I'm going to be giving a demo on Friday and Saturday times TBD, but definitely come by, check out the village. They're gonna have CTFs, they're gonna have cool demos, and it's gonna be a fun time. Come and hang out with us. And with that, let's jump into the video. So here I have my Flipper Zero. Uh, this is the Q Flipper program, and it's just a nice way. It allows me to, you know, basically uh, more or less screen share what's going on in the little tiny screen of my Flipper Zero device so that you can see it. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to attempt with a default firmware to see what we could do to replay a signal from this controller. And we're gonna see why it falls short. And so to perform that analysis initially, what we're gonna do is we're gonna also be using a so our software defined radio. We're using a USRP. This is definitely an overkill our uh, SDR to be using for this specific task, but that's what we got over there on the bench. And so we can send this signal and we can receive the uh, wave, uh, not the waveform, we can receive what the FFT here looks like and where the center frequency is and how far apart the two pulses of the FSK modulation are in the signal. In past video, in, in the past video, we kind of talked about this and we use Universal Radio Hacker in order to perform a replay attack. But maybe maybe people don't have a SDR with the capabilities of transmit, but they have a flipper zero. So this is a really cool tool that a lot of people use, but in its stock configuration, the Flipper Zero will not be able to replay this signal. And let's talk about why. So I can uh, click this remote again, and I can see that we have the center frequency is 433.625 megahertz. And so that is the critical, th th that's one of the factors. I'd say there's two factors, the center frequency and the modulation. And then you can see we have uh, we can we can hit hit stop here and we can measure the kind of the delta from the center to each uh, each side of of the the two pulses the the two frequencies that are used in the modulation and uh, we talked in a previous video we, we can measure this this is about 35 kilohertz of a deviation there and so we need a modulation an FSK modulation that matches that so Let's take a look at the Flipper Zero here. So again, we're using QFlipper, and we're going to look around here. So right now, I am just I'm just in the the standard sub gigahertz tool. This is not one any any custom type of a Flipper firmware. This is just the default official Flipper firmware. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go to read raw, and then we're going to look through the preset frequencies that are available. And we're going to immediately see what our problem is, right? So here we can see the kind of the default center frequency for 433 megahertz is 433.92. But that is not gonna work for, for our device, right? So let's go down. And then we go down all the way past where our center frequency is to 433. 0.42 and we go down further and and, and you know but we can clearly see in between these two frequencies is where our signal should be and so if we select a modulation so let's just select FM uh, 230, 238 to start with um, and then let's let's just select this let's say they ah, this is kind of close right and then I'm gonna hit back and now I'm going to capture and replay the signal. And so 
I'm gonna do this twice so that you can see what it looks like on this screen as well as on our other screen. Oh, no, 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 actually, I have a way better way to do this. Let's pop this over to this screen and then we can watch them simultaneously. All right, uh, that's by my face, there we go. All right, so we're going to listen there and we're going to hit record. We're gonna capture the signal and so uh, again, we can see uh, the, the correct, the actual signal from our remote is again on that center frequency of 433.625. And now we're going to replay it. And we can see that again, the, the obvious problem is that the frequency here is too low. But there's another problem. That's not the only problem. You can see that the, the deviation that the FSK signal is using is far too small, right? So, so the width of the signal and, and kind of where the peaks are, that matters too. So again, I'll, I'll show real signal, uh, flipper zero signal. So you can see that not only do we have a center frequency problem with that, mod with that setup, we have a modulation problem. So let's go. Let's go back and we'll, we'll uh, say exit. We'll go back into redraw and we're gonna reconfigure this. So uh, the, the, again, the frequency doesn't matter because we know that's not gonna be right. But let's go and look at the modulation FM476. So these are preset modulations. These can also be customized in our Flipper firmware, but we're gonna find out here uh, that we, we don't need to modify that in this instance. So. Let's go and yeah, so let's select those, hit back. And so we're gonna, again, we're gonna record the signal. So we're gonna hit record, transmit the legit signal, and then we're gonna replay. And so that, that looks good, right? Cause see, you can see the distance between, uh, between the two peaks. And here you can see the distance is, it's, it's, it's wider, but it's, it's close. And what you find out with, with uh, radios like this, close is sometimes good enough. And I, the, the key word there is sometimes. But uh, that does look a lot like the shape of our signal, of the real signal over there. And so that modulation of, if we go back into the, to the screen here, to the configuration screen, of FM476, that modulation configuration looks like it's gonna work. But again, our problem is the frequency. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna close out of this because when we push our new firmware, we can't have both of those open at the same time, is I have gone ahead, actually, I should, I should come over here, uh, and we are going to, we have cloned the Flipper Zero firmware. So this is the official firmware, it's not, not some firmware mod, and so we are going to be programming the firmware mod ourselves, but just a very, very small one. Uh, as a delta to the official stock firmware. And so I've cloned this repository, but the first thing we're gonna do is, is we're going to calm all the nerves here and we're gonna use our legal, our, our in-house legal expert right here, and that's Grok. And we're gonna ask, hey Grok, what are the FCC guidelines? Obviously FCC, that's United States. You need to do your own research if you live in a different country or if you are transporting a flipper zero to a different country you need to know those countries laws but in the united states the frequency range is the key thing that i was interested in here is 433.5 to 434.5 and so we can see there that our 0.625 frequency does fit within that range, and I actually think it's uh, like like I think this is actually strict because I've seen the Flipper Zero presets go even lower than this, and so uh, potentially there is another band that's allowed there. Uh, but but we we can be quite confident that we are within the realm of the law by programming this device to operate on a different center frequency, which is important. You gotta gotta know gotta know your laws. All right. So here we go, we have cloned the firmware repository for the Flipper, and you're gonna see right here, we do have this executable, which is the Flipper build tool. 
And that's what we're going to be using to recompile our firmware. So there is a file in here first. So you can see uh, git status. And you can see we're, we're, we're completely up to date with the dev branch. No modifications have been made yet. So all we're going to do is we're going to go into lib, sub gigahertz, and the sub gigahertz settings file here. And we can see that we have these frequencies preset into here. So here we have the frequency list here. There's a couple places where we're going to have to set this as a, as a parameter. So we can see all those frequencies that we saw in the menu on the sub gigahertz module. So we see 433.42 and 0.4 and, and 0.92. And so right in the middle there, just, be, just to keep things nice and neat, we're going to put our center frequency of 433.625. That's some zeros and a comma at the end. And then we're going to take that because there's a couple other places so here's the hopper frequency. We're not going to use this, but it does have a mode on the flipper zero where it can hop between a bunch of different frequencies and try to uh, wait until it sees a signal. And so uh, we might as well put this in there as well, even though some of the other ones aren't in there. That's fine. Uh, Europe and Russia, not going to touch that. Uh, here's the EU uh, frequency ranges. And here we have the uh, ranges for the United States. So there's some there's some region specific ones. And so we're also going to go ahead in here and add that there as well. And uh, again, in the hopper, the region specific one, Japan, Japan, it looks and then and then we're good. Okay, so those are the changes. And we can run git diff on that file. And we can see that we've made three, four changes. And so now we have added those into those lists and now we can go and run the firmware build tool and it's going to recompile things. Now I have already compiled the firmware and so this recompile was extremely fast. Uh, the whole entire firmware does not build that fast but it, it was only building only that one small change that I was making. And then just making sure, okay, I've, I closed out of the QFlipper application because otherwise it will, it will give me an error here. And so we're going to say firmware build tool. Uh, let me look at the help because I forgot the command. And so the flash USB command, if you're doing a complete uh, flash for the first time, I kind of suggest doing the, the flash USB full. That just does an entire firmware push, but it does take a while. So in our case, we're only going to flash and do the limited flash of the updates. And so it really should only be updating the sub gigahertz module. And so it's going to push the firmware to our device. Again, I can't open the queue flipper to, to, to show you what's going on. But what's going to happen is, oh, it's going to run it. It's going to have an error. That's super. Oh, yes. This is this is a great example of what goes wrong. So you can't have the sub gigahertz program open because it's trying to it's trying to flash it and it's open makes sense makes sense so here we go again we've closed out now of the sub gigahertz module and now it's updated good to go let's open q flipper and it's actually it's saying it's in dfu it's like now it's per, it, it reboots it's performing the it's performing the update and it's not going to connect here until the update's complete. Now it's complete, just like that. Here we go. We're connecting, and we're all updated. So let's let's go ahead and share the screen there. Now what we got? All right, sub gigahertz module, read raw. I can go to my config, and now if I go down this way we can see 433.62. Now it really is under the hood. We know that's 625, uh, which maybe it matters, maybe it doesn't, but uh, yeah, let's just roll with it. And then we're gonna select our modulation. And then just, just for fun, let's go take this over here. And so we can kind of see this. I think this is fun to watch. Watch it on the SDR as well as what's going on. So. We're going to, actually, I'm going to turn this FFT hold off. And then we're going to back out of here. 
going to hit record, transmit, stop. And uh, as in just to, just for the proof, you can see the light. It does randomly flash, but every time you click the button, it does also flash. So I feel like that could be some confirmation for you that I'm not making this up. And so we're going to transmit. And we can see that it is working. And now we are able to use our Flipper Zero to replay to perform a replay attack of our dog shot collar. Uh, yeah, with, with the modified firmware on the Flipper Zero. So this is uh, a good thing to try if you ever need to replay a signal. And the only thing holding you up is that center frequency. Again, you need to make sure that your country's laws allow you to go and transmit at that center frequency. Receiving, if you're just receiving a signal, that's usually fine. But if you're transmitting, then you really need to know your country's laws. And uh, I've said that a couple times, but uh, that's for you, YouTube overlords. No demonetizing this video. I, yeah, let's not go there. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you uh, find uh, some Flipper Zero content interesting. I'm starting to get into this device a little bit more. At first, I thought it was a little gimmicky, but I do like how it forces me to learn. So, uh, so I, I reproduce the signal in the SDR, and then it's an extra layer of reinforcement learning to be able to make a tool like this transmit your signal. So let me know if you like these videos or if you uh, want me to go back to the old style videos, but uh, I like kind of having a, a little bit of a side quest into some RF content. So uh, you have a good day. Thanks.